hi there and welcome to today's class for this mathematics class we'll be discussing about a very important topic in mathematics called indices right so indices is a crucial topic um a very important foundation for a mathematics student to understand so in this tutorial video i'll break down um the concept of indices from crash so I'll start from the definition of indices and the several rules that governs indices, right? So we'll look at the full tutorial um, video on the concept of indices one after the other. So let's start with the um, definition of indices. By the way, the word indices is a plural form. The singular form is index. So I'm saying that indices is a plural form of the word index. So I'm saying indices is the plural form of the word index so what is index by definition an index is simply a power or degree to which a variable or value or a term is being raised so the power or the degree to which a variable or a number or perhaps a term is being raised is said to be um index for instance, let's say I have, um, let's say I have a to power three in this format. Let's say I have a to power three in this format. What does it mean? It means that, by the way, for now, note that this power here, this three here, is called the index, or you call it the power, or you call it what the degree. So note that this three here is called power, or index, or degree. Why this a? is called the base right so i have this one here so note that the power here is called the index or degree or power and note that this value here a is called the base so the idea behind index is that index tells you the number of time the base will occur so i'm having listen up i said the index which is three here will tell you the number of time this base will occur so I'm having a to power three, it means what the a will occur three times. That becomes a times a times a. So note that index tells you the number of time a base will occur. So I have this. So that becomes your idea behind index, right? <clears throat> All right. Um, at this point now, let's look at the several laws that governs um indices one after the other. So let's look at the laws of indices. Let's look at the several laws of indices, one after the other. Basically, there are about seven laws of indices. So I'll take my time to take each law one after the other. Right? So let's start with the first law called the multiplication law so the first law there is called the multiplication law number one i have the multiplication law so what is your um concept behind multiplication law by the way when it comes to multiplication law the idea is that when like basis that is the same basis are multiplying by the word base. I think I believe you should know what, what I mean by base, something like this. So when like bases or when the same bases are multiplying, simply had their part. That's all. So let me just show you um what I just said using uh, um an illustration. So let's say I have um a to power three multiplying a to power two. We said when like bases or when the same bases are multiplying in this form, simply had their power. So that becomes a to power what? 3 plus 2. That gives a to power 5. So note that when like bases, a and a are similar, are like bases. When they're multiplying, simply what they had their power. 2 plus 3 plus 2. That gives 5. That becomes your concept behind multiplication law. When you're seeing times, you what? You had their power. So that's like the idea behind that man there. Let's take another example. Let's say I have a to power six times 
b to the power 3 times a to the power 2 times b to the power 4. Look up, please. Let's get this done, please. Observe that in this second question here, I'm seeing like basis A and A are like basis B and B and like basis. Mind you, I can go ahead and combine A and B. You now say A times B to the power 6 plus 3. No, it's not done. We said there must be of what? Of the same basis. Of the same base. By the word base, I believe you know what I'm saying. This is a base. This is a base. They must be of the same thing so they can add up their power. So my task now is that I'll bring the term that has the same base together. So I'll have um, a to power 6 times what? a to power 2. These two have the same base. Next up, times b to power 3 times b to power 4. So I can add the part together because they have the same base. That becomes a to power 6 plus 2 um, times b to power 3 plus 4. What I get here, that becomes a to power 8. 8 times b to power 7. This gives a to power 8, b to power 7 as being my answer to this particular problem. So this becomes your idea behind multiplication law of indices. Alright, let's look at the second law of indices called the division law. So second law says division law. That's the division law. Let's look at the concept guiding division law. Um, division law, when it comes to division law, the tax night there is that when like bases are dividing, simply what they subtract the power. For this young man here, we said when like bases are multiplying, just add their power. Similarly, when like bases are, multi are dividing in this case, simply subtract their power. That's all. So let me just explain with this example. Let's say I have a to the power 5 divided, divided by a to the power 2. We said when like bases are what they are dividing. Simply what they subtract their power. That becomes 5 minus 2. That gives a to the power what? a to the power 3. That's all please. So note that when like bases are dividing, just what they subtract their power. This becomes your constant behind <coughs> division law of indices. So I have this on the board here. All right. Um, without wasting much of our time, let's move to the what we call the power law, right? Let's move to the third law called the power law. Let's look at the concept behind the power law. All right, uh, when it comes to the power law, basically, um, the law is quite simple, right? The idea behind power law is that um, I'll be multiplying um, the power of an index um, to which is being raised. That's all. So let me just explain using um, some illustration to further um, understand the index behind power law. So let's say I have, for instance, let's say I have a to power n into m in this case here. This is a base being raised to a particular power such that they are both being raised to another power. How do you simplify this? So I'll be this becomes a this a becomes your base here this n we multiply this m so that becomes a to power what n m this becomes what we refer to as power law of indices so this becomes your illustration behind power law of indices so let's say i have um, a, a reasonable example in this case let's say i have uh, for instance let's say i have a to power 3 into 2 this way we said it's quite simple this is the problem under what power law multiply the power that becomes a to power 3 times 2 that gives a to power 6 now mind you at this point don't confuse um the power law with what multiplication law what's going law there we said when like are multiplying just what add their power you had it to power um 5 in this case right by the way, for this one now, let me just try to explain um, what it means. If I have, look up, if I have x squared, this means s times x. That thing, two, two places in two times, I have this. If I have a cube, a cube raised to power 2, it means that a cube two times. That becomes a cube times a cube. 
So what this becomes, we said when like base multiplying, all you there had their part. That's three plus three. That will give eight to power six. Observe, I just express power law in terms of multiplication law. Look at it now. I express power law in terms of what multiplication law, and I'm seeing it correct. So it becomes your idea behind power law. Let's look at the fourth law called the zeroth index law. So the fourth law called the zero index law. Let's look at the fourth law called the zeroth index law. For zero index law, this states that any number or variable or term raised to power zero is equal to one except zero. Listen up. I'm saying that the zeroth law of indices states that any number or variable or term raised to power zero is always one except zero. So when it comes to zeroth law of indices or perhaps zero index law, there's an exception to it. The exception, the exception is that it must not be zero. So right. So the task now is that I'm saying that any number or variable raised to power zero is always what always one except what except zero please so except zero please so any number can be here this power zero is one but if i'm having zero over zero that's not that's infinity it's not possible please so um the task now is that the, there's an exception to it so that variable must not what must not be equal to zero it becomes your idea behind zero law of indices so let's take a few problems under this and let's see what we get um, when it comes to zero law of indices, the task is quite simple, right? So let's say I have um, a to power zero. We said a to power zero. A to power zero is just one. A to power zero is what we give one. That's all. If I have minus three, a to power zero. Of course, this gives what the this gives one. Observe that both minus and three are being encased in a bracket, such that are raised so that they are both raised to what a particular power which is zero so this zero is affecting both minus three both minus and three does i have one what of if i have minus into three to pass zero what would my answer here yeah? of course of that this minus this zero is not affecting the minus because they are not together now in this case now i'll have this minus remain the same this is about zero is what is one so observe this these two please when this minus three are both encased in a bracket such that they have been raised to power zero, of course, my answer is one. But in this case here, the, the, they are not the same thing, please. The zero here is only affecting, or perhaps the index zero is only affecting this three alone. So it becomes one, minus remain the same. So note um, how this works, please. So this becomes your concept behind a zero law of indices, or you call it zero index law all right um let's look at um few other few types of um law right so we said we have the motion law division law power law and zero index law let's look at what we call the negative index law so number five there negative index law all right let's look at the concept behind negative index law for negative index law let's say um a variable a is being raised to a negative power the mathematical expression becomes the inverse or reciprocal of that base to its positive um power right so i'm saying that when it comes to negative power law or negative index law the idea is that whenever a term or variable or a value is being raised to a negative power, the answer or the multiple expression becomes an inverse or a reciprocal of that base to its positive index. That's all. So I'm saying that uh, let's say I have a to power minus um, n, for instance, it becomes a negative index or power or degree. Now we said, what does this what does this mean? I said that I will this to, to remove this minus, I'll take out an inverse or you call it reciprocal of that base 
b raised to what the power but what a positive here in this case i have a positive here i'll not return that the minus becomes what positive so it becomes the um idea behind the negative index law so this minus becomes one over then a then attach this m back so i have this concept behind negative law of indices um let's still explain this concept behind negative law um to understand the concept very well so let's say i have for instance i have two raised to the power minus two right for of course this will give this minus becomes one over right the inverse over this is two all to power is two this will give one over three to the power two we give four this becomes your answer or perhaps to or the, perhaps the example that further explain the concept behind in negative index law so that becomes your fifth um type of or perhaps your fifth law that govern the concept of indices so i have this let's look at the other or perhaps several other um laws that governs indices and let's so we get this All right, let's look at the sixth law called the fractional index law. So the sixth law there is called the fractional index law. So let's look at the sixth law called the fractional index law. By the way, for the concept of fractional index law, the tax is that a base is being raised to a particular Power, but in a fraction form right so if i have um a raised to the power four this is not a fractional index um law if i have a raised to the power four over three of course this is a what a fractional index law the power are always in fractional form please so let's say i have a raised to the power m over m this way right so let's say i have this um, in this form, of course, the power here is in fraction, that's n over m. What would be the mathematical expression of this um, problem here? So, how do I express this mathematically? The concept is quite simple. This m becomes m root. So, I will have m root what? a to power n. So, note that this m becomes m root this a to power this m this becomes your mathematical expression for um, fractional index law so this m this down denominator will comes as a what as as a as m root of what a to power n so i have what i'm saying here so let's take a few examples so when i explain the concept behind fractional index law so let's say i have nine um to power three over two for instance this can be written as this two we said becomes what this m becomes m root that becomes the second root of what nine to power three are, are you there so if it gives what if i'm saying the second root second root and root are the same thing so, so i'm saying that at this point now i'm saying that if i have two root nine and also root 9 these two things mean the same thing please so the second root of 9 or root of 9 are the same thing and we know that we know that this will give what the 3 because root 9 will give 3 so i'm saying that the second root of 9 is of course 3 but mind you i still have a 3 left here that becomes this 3 is to power 3 this 3 comes down back second root of 9 is 3 right so this three comes back three to part three we give 27 this really becomes your expression behind fractional index law let's take one more example let's say i have eight or to part two over three this will give this three becomes third root of third root of what there um eight to part two mind you this is third root not three root eight observe this difference from this and this 
this is called three root eight from sword but this one becomes a three then that three is within this root observe root eight so observe the difference this, this one is called three root eight what is one is called the third root of eight please so know how you write it properly please so this one becomes three root eight from sword so is what the third root of eight this one, this one, this one. so this one i right this is what i'm writing here so note this man here very important please so if i have third root of eight what does it mean third root of eight means look for three numbers that you multiply together that will give you eight look for three numbers that you multiply together that will give you eight so we know two times two times two is eight of course two times two four four times two eight so three numbers they are two so the third root of eight is of course is equal to two mind you i saw a two left i have a two here this becomes four that becomes your um idea behind um the rational index law of indices so i have this let's look at the final um law that governs indices and we're off let's look at the seventh rule that governs the idea um of indices the seventh truth is called the product product per law it becomes your seventh truth uh sorry the seventh rule that governs indices is called the product par law for product par law the um technique is quite an easy tax what's the technique there i'm only focusing on this concept note please when different things listen up or different things are multiplying and they are all being raised to a particular power the answer or, or perhaps the mathematical expression will become each index to that particular power so i'll pick out each index being raised to that particular power what do i mean let's say i have a b and c and perhaps b raised to a particular power n we said from the idea of product law of indices it becomes a to power n dot b to power n dot c to power n this gives the idea of uh, product law of indices so i have this as being the concept behind product law of indices so let's say i have um let's say i have three times two times um three times two times let's say um four right being raised to power two what was the concept we said pick out each term to that two so that becomes three to part two um times three to part two times four to part two three to part two nine times three to part two four times what the 16. if i multiply nine times four times 16 there i will have about um nine times four times 16 that gives five seven six has been my answer to this particular um, problem using the seventh law of indices so these are like the basic concept law behind indices ranging from multiplication law division law um product power law sorry product law eh, sorry power law um we have the zeroth law of indices we have the negative index law we have the fractional index law and finally we have the product power law so like the seven law of indices next class now we'll look at how to apply all this law in solving problems right in our next class so see you in next class if you found this class helpful please i just beg you please 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 do well to like this video put a comment and subscribe to my channel please so see you in the next class if you are interested in following us in our TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook page, there's a, the link is provided in the description of this video. Please do where to follow us and like our videos over there too. Thank you and welcome to Excellent Link Academy. See you in the next class.